Hi, this is Sally Wood for Be Inspired and today I am going to show you how to transfer a picture onto a stocking. I was asked recently by a lady if I could do this and I said yes, but <laughs> I hadn't really thought about how I was going to do it. I came up with an idea last night and having looked at this, I can't do it the way I'd hope to do it. But I will show you how it's done. Let's get on with it. I think what I'm going to do is a church window style and something I've noticed is that although this one and this one are probably equally as wide, this one's wider, and these two are equally as tall, but this one's taller. So I'm going to make my initial design to be wide and tall. So I have here a piece of freezer paper, which is perfect. And I'm going to take some measurements. So the trim I'm using is about a quarter of an inch. I'm going to pop it that way for there and that way on that side and take that into consideration as well. I need to make sure that it is at least a six inches wide will do for that. If I take it at least half an inch over the top, so I get a good apex, maybe to nine inches for my initial pan. Because I want it a mirror image on both sides, I'm gonna fold that in half like that. My first plan is actually to cut this down to the right height. So I'm gonna measure up from the bottom. Do not <laughs> cut your uh, tape measure. I have done that before, it's really irritating. Here's my eight and a half across you know what always double check okay so i'm actually going to go six which half of six is three so i'm going to just cut that up three inches all the way now the nice thing about having a soft measuring tape is you can work out where your end marks are like that and then fold it in half and when you fold it in half you can find your center mark a lot easier than working it out mathematically so i am going to put a pin right there if i pop that on there and on up it's quite oversized so i'm going to just bring the top down to within i think half an inch should do it i'm going to measure that there and there that looks almost equidistant pop a pin in the top here straighten that up to here and I'm going to put another pin at the base here. Now it seems a bit convoluted I know but I want to work out where I can start going up and around. I have to be careful because I don't want the trim to cut in too much so if I do that like that I think that would give a nice shape to it. I'm going to hold that into position. You might not be able to see it but there's a little lad's head so if I pop that there and very carefully mark where I think, and that could actually come in a little bit closer there and then into here. By having that, I've got my new shape that I'm going to use. Fold that up. I'm going to shape one side because sometimes paper doesn't do what you want it to do. I'm going to come around here. It's like playing dot to dot. I'm just going to curve that round like that. I'm not doing a very sharp apex because I don't want it to be too sharp and I can alter it if I want to. So I'm going to go around a second time. Just like that, nice and easy. I think I'll just sharpen it slightly like that. And there I have a window. I've given the top here just over half an inch. In order to make sure that all of them are the same, I'm going to put a little mark here. So the top of the tree always comes to that point on those three. And for the length, where the bottom of his name is, I am going to give it same distance so that's uh five eighths actually i'm going to measure it that way i might take it shorter but i'll have a look i try to do things equally so that's to there i'm going to fold that under in a straight line the mark for the top of the tree is here so i'm going to pop that there pin across the top pin across the bottom like that so it's square on if i make it too wide it's going to look distorted compared to the other two. It's going to do the best I can. Pin it on the outside like that, as close to the edge, because I don't want to be tearing the fabric, or ruining the fabric, I should say, in any way, shape, or form. I think that might do. I'm going to cut this out as close to my pattern as I can. Now I've come to this pin. I'm just going to angle my scissors to go underneath it, but without moving it too much. Cut straight across like that. Pick the fabric up and twist it. Usually you don't. Usually you're the one that's twisting around the fabric, but it's such a small piece it won't matter. And just go down the other side. Then go underneath the pin. As I did with the other one, flatten that out as best I can. Put my mark at the top of the tree, which is about there, because this is the long one. I was going to make it narrow 
lower but I think that if I leave it wider it will give a better look and match everything else even though it is longer so I'm going to just pop pins in and cut that out I think that's about even there to there looks like it if it's not it's not going to be that much different I'll put one each side just hold it in place and I'll cut that out I'll shorten it again for the other little boy so I'll cut into there like that and on around as evenly as I can make it. So I'm going to undo each of these stockings so that I can put the placement of the pictures on more evenly. All I've had to do is pull and I will just undo all the way around. This one has a lining on the front, they often do, and I'm going to half turn it inside out. I'm going to poke the lining through there just to hold it and flatten this out like that. This is our two vase, so I'm going to pop that one on here. Make sure it looks centered. It can't come down too far because of the way the heel goes, but I think it can go there. Pop some pins in along the edge like that so that it holds. I'm also going to put them facing the way I'm going to be sewing and it's easier to work with. On this corner here it doesn't look as straight as it could so I'm going to just nip that up. Sometimes t-shirt fabric when you're cutting or sewing walks. I could actually stabilize it but it's already got this stabilizer on there and I don't want to cause any unnecessary bulk. I think because this isn't going to be washed it'll be fine. After all it's stable against the hessian which is this fabric on the back. Sackcloth I think some people it. And this is where my start point is. Now she wants this to have gold trim around it so I'm actually going to put a zigzag around here in gold just in case it shows that down. Now the zigzag I like to use it does a couple of straight stitches and then does the zigzag. As I get to the corner I'm going to remove that. So I'm at the corner, pop that down and back in like that, and I'm going to twist. Go on round to the top of the window. Now I'm kind of pushing the fabric into position with my fingernails. I suddenly thought that might be being sewn in underneath, that wouldn't be any good. Now if the fabric, because it is t-shirt material, starts walking, I'm just going to put a pin there to help keep it even as I go. And as I get closer to the top, pop that there like that. Because it's on the bias, it walks more than it would do normally. So just hold that out like that into the top. And here's the top here where the pin is. I'm going to remove that pin, but hold that where it is. So a couple more stitches, one more into there. And now I can turn this and come down the other side. Again, I will use that to hold it. As I'm coming round here, just open that out just in case that gets caught underneath. As I come round, looking at that, I think that's even. I'll make it even with the trim. Carry on into that corner. I can trim anything back if I need to. And as I come down, it's kind of pushing this down, but maybe it'll be okay. Lift that up, turn it around, and then aim towards where I started. Pop that there and let it feed into place. Cut back all of the threads so they're nice and tight. Not that on the back it's going to make much difference. I'm going to use this foot. I'm actually going to feed it through the top to keep it balanced and then it will feed under here and keep stable as I'm going around. I always make sure your trim is facing the right way. That's the back side. There's not much sparkle and this has more sparkle. So I'm going to pop that through here like this. Just a little ways so it comes out the back. I can hold that. Pop that to the center or thereabouts. Put the foot down. Now I've got the longest stitch onto the width. So I go up, the needle is going to move. I'm going to put it on the widest so it's going to come in very close to that outside edge. And this knobble here on here, I'm going to just run on the inside of the fabric. With luck, all of this will go into place. I'm going to hold the trim slightly over so I can see where that's going or slightly up I should say because I want it to be as even as possible and I'm not going very fast because I don't want to put it in the wrong place either so here we go I'm coming into the corner I know that if this part is level with the back of this it should be in place 
so then I'll go over two stitches. I'm going to check to see if that's in the right place. Not quite. So I'm going to do one more stitch. I might not do a full stitch because they're quite large. I'm going to pull it back slightly and pop that down. And then I'm going to lift the foot like that, turn the fabric like this. Now, instead of putting it straight down, this trim here, I'm going to push back so it's facing backwards and then put the foot down. That helps the trim to go parallel at the bottom here, which is what you need. And again, I'm going to just carry on sewing. I'm going to follow that curve round. Hopefully I haven't gone out of shape too much. It's very easy to so especially on a curve, you need to try to keep that as straight as you can. Almost coming to the top, so I'm going to just carry on sewing, keeping that on an imaginary course now because I'm going over. And I will check to see where that is because I have no real idea. You can lift your foot up higher if need be. Oh, I think I need one more stitch like that. And again, I'm going to lift my foot up and swivel this around, push that back. Although on this one, it's not so imperative. It's not a 90 degree angle. It's just a shape. And again, down the other side, keeping this in line with the outside of there. Just go at a moderate speed. You don't have to go very fast. If you go very fast, you're gonna put it in wrong. And that's not a good idea. Open that up again. Just make sure I don't go over it. And then on round the curve to the bottom. Before I come along this front, I'm going to cut this trim right back to the stitching. I think that's in the right place. I'll double check for the turn. No, I need one more stitch. Although that might be over it, so I'm going to make it half a stitch. Needle down, foot up, twist, and then push the trim back again like you did on the first corner. Lower that into place and then line it up to finish here. As I come in here, I'm also going to cut this back. Now it's just going under here, so I'm going to cut that back to just over like that. With luck, everything will go in as it should. There we are, into place, two stitches, and then reverse. Lift it up and cut it all out. I'm going to use this open foot, pop it on there like that. The reason is I don't want to twist any of the trim and it will go underneath quite nicely. So I'm going to just push all of that in and again start in the middle. I think this needs to go on the standard, which is 3.5. And I'm just going to sew into the corner. It's such a fine trim that it won't notice if it's not folded up at a 45 degree angle. So I'm just going to sew that in like that, needle down, foot up. Now that looks like it could be too far in, so I'm going to push it out with my fingers, then on up and around. Now I'm running this trim on the inside of that foot so it's nice and even all the way to the top. And as I say, they're not small stitches, it's the biggest stitch that I can do into the top like that, twist and then on round. There's a couple of places where the white shows, but for the most part it doesn't, and that's what counts. I'll say a little bit there. And I might be able to push that over just a little bit. There we go. If I do that, it covers it, and when I sew it in, I'll just hold it with my fingers so it can't move. It's such a minuscule amount, I'm not gonna worry about it. And then here, there's a little bit of the gold from the original stitching showing, so I'm gonna pull that over, hide that up a little bit and push that into shape. Again, I'm just going to push that in so it goes around nicely. Lift everything up. With my finger, I've just pushed it back into place there. I'm just gonna finish off in the center with forward and back over that join. And it's done. The last part of this project is to re-sew the front and the back of these stockings back together. So I'm going to pop that under here. The stitches are on a 3.5. Lay that out as flat as I can with the lining in place over the top. I am just going to sew down and see how this turns out. Over the original stitches, so that holds that in place. Line the front and sides up. I haven't pinned them because they shouldn't walk. And I'm going to just keep an eye on where the underside is so that I don't go too close to it and cause it to fray. I'm unraveling it as I go. I'm going to just start coming around the heel, remove any threads that might have been in there. I'm going to try not to come too close because that's the corner. I don't want to cut in too much. 
put my finger where the corner is, right there. I might have to go around again, but I'll check. I should all go in <laughs> after it all came out. I'll check it on the other side, make sure that everything's where it needs to be. There we go. Almost there. And on up to the top to finish it. And again, over the stitches so that it's in. I'm just going to make sure that all of that is in. The last thing I'm going to do is over stitch it. And I've got my favourite stitch, which is a zigzag with a straight stitch. I'm going to do that all the way around. I'm more concerned about getting this hessian into place than if I've got too much of this over the seam. And when I want to reverse, because this doesn't do a very good reverse, I'm just going to put it onto a three and reverse on it. And that should hold it. I will check that everything's covered again. It looks like it. I think I did a relatively good job. I'm not going to cut it back. I'm just going to turn it the right way around. Thank you for joining me on this short project. I actually think the lady's going to be thrilled with these. They've turned out really nice and quite understated, I think, which is actually what I prefer. Just remember to change your foot accordingly if you need to and to open up these will give you the better result than hand sewing. If you want to hear more from me, please subscribe and hit the bell button and a few thumbs up would be excellent. And then I know how I'm doing. And in the meantime, see you later. Take care. Ciao. I think that these all turned out pretty neat. 